Dear students, welcome to my channel Learn to Live. In this video series, we will be discussing 8th Standard Science, chapter by chapter, based on NCERT or CBSE syllabus. In the previous video, we learned chapter 3, Synthetic Fibers and Plastics. Those who missed that chapter or need a revision, please go and watch it. The link is given in the description. So without any delay, let us go to today's chapter. Chapter 4 Materials, Metals and Nonmetals. There are a lot of materials around us. Different items are made up of different materials depending on the purposes. In this chapter, we will learn about metals and nonmetals. Let's get started. In this chapter, we will be learning the following things. Physical properties of metals and non-metals. Chemical properties of metals and non-metals. Uses of metals and non-metals. Finally, we will be discussing some questions and answers, as a part of revision. There are a lot of materials around us. These materials can be distinguished into, metals and non-metals, based on their physical, and chemical properties. Let us learn about the physical properties of metals and non-metals first. Malleability The property of metals, by which they can be beaten into thin sheets, is called malleability. For example, take iron nail. Hammer this nail. You can see that the nails are deformed. By further hammering, the deformed nail will be transformed into sheets. This property is called malleability. If you do the same experiment with a non-metal, it will not become thin sheets. Instead, it will become powder. So malleability is a characteristic property of metals. However there are some metals, like graphite and coal, which does not show this property. Conductivity The property by which Heat or electricity transferred through a material, is called conductivity. Metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. For example, consider the metal shown in the picture. Let us heat this metal at one side. After some time you can observe that, the metal has become hot in the other areas also. This shows that, metals are good conductors of heat. Now consider another metal as shown. Let us apply a voltage through this metal. By doing so, you will observe that, the metal rod is passing the electricity we gave. If you do the same experiment with a non-metal, it will not conduct heat, or electricity. So they are bad conductors of heat and electricity. Ductility The property by which, a metal can be drawn into thin wires is called ductility. This is also a distinguishing property of metals, which non-metals do not have. For example, consider a metal as shown. If this metal undergoes ductility, we can observe that, the metal has drawn into thin wires. Sonorous Objects made with metals will produce ringing sound, when struck hard. That is why metals are said to be sonorous while non-metals do not show this property. So, in general, we can say, metals are those substances which shows the following properties. Hard, lustrous, malleable, ductile, sonorous, good conductors of heat and electricity. Examples of metals are, iron, silver, aluminum, steel, etc. Also, Non-metals are those substances that do not show the above properties. Example, sulfur, carbon, phosphorus, oxygen, etc. Now let us learn about chemical properties of metals and non-metals. Like physical properties, there are some chemical properties too, which will distinguish metals with non-metals. Let us learn about those chemical properties. Reaction with oxygen. Let us first understand how metals react with oxygen with some example experiments. Rusting of iron. Rusting of iron occurs when iron reacts with oxygen, 
and water as below. Now collect this oxide or rust formed, mix it with water and test it with a red litmus paper. You can observe that the red litmus paper turns to blue because the oxide of iron is basic in nature. Let us see another experiment. Burning of magnesium ribbon in the air. Burning of magnesium occurs when iron reacts with oxygen. The reaction formula is Now collect the ash formed, mix it with water, and test it with a red litmus paper. You can observe that the red litmus paper turns to blue because the oxides of magnesium is basic in nature. Word equation for this reaction is So in general, we can observe that the oxides of metals are basic in nature. Let us understand how non-metals react with oxygen with an example experiment. Burning of sulfur in the air. For this experiment, take some sulfur powder in a spoon and burn it. Keep this in a closed jar so that the fumes will not escape. The product is called sulfur dioxide. Now remove the spoon from the jar, add water to the jar and shake well. The product is called sulfurous acid. If you place a blue litmus paper in the sulfurous acid, you can observe that blue litmus paper turns to red because the oxide of sulfur is acidic in nature. So in general, we can observe oxides of non-metals are acidic in nature. Next chemical property is Reaction with water Let us first understand how metals react with water with the sample experiment. Sodium with water Due to the high reactive power of sodium, it reacts with air and even water. So it is stored in kerosene. For this experiment, take a small piece of sodium, dry it with a filter paper, and wrap it in a cotton piece. Now, take some water in a glass or beaker, and put the cotton-wrapped sodium in it. Sodium reacts with water as follows. If you touch the beaker, you will understand it became hot. Now test this solution with a red litmus paper. You can observe that, red litmus paper turns to blue, because the hydroxide of metals are basic in nature. Also we must note that, some metals like sodium and potassium, reacts with water vigorously, compared to metals like iron or gold. Let us now understand the reactivity of non-metals with water. Generally, non-metals do not react with water, but they might be very reactive in air. For example, phosphorus is very reactive, and it catches fire if exposed to air. For this reason, phosphorus is kept in water, to prevent its contact with atmospheric oxygen. Reaction with acids. Let us understand how metals and non-metals react with acids through an experiment. For this experiment, take some metals and non-metals in separate test tubes. Now, add diluted hydrochloric acid into these test tubes. Check if any reaction is happening. If not, then heat the test tubes. You can observe that, from the test tubes with metals there is a pop sound. This is because the metals react with acid, and produce hydrogen gas. While, the non-metals do not react with acids.
Reaction with bases. Let us understand how metals react with bases through an experiment. For this experiment, take a small piece of sodium and put it in water to make sodium hydroxide solution. Now put a small piece of aluminum foil into this solution. Now bring a burning matchstick to the mouth of this test tube. You can hear a popping sound of hydrogen gas. You can observe that metals react with bases to produce hydrogen gas. Non-metals react with bases in a complex way. Displacement Reactions For this experiment, let us take 5 beakers, A, B, C, D, and E, with a solution and metal in each beaker as shown below. After some time, you can see the following changes. You can observe that, in these type of solutions, only metals of higher reactive power can replace a metal from its solution, like the reactions in beaker A and B. If solution is made with higher reactive metal, then the added metal cannot replace the higher reactive metal from its solution, like the reactions in beaker C, D, and E. Uses of metals and non-metals Let us see what are the uses of metals. Metals are used in the making of aeroplanes, trains, automobiles, utensils, etc. Uses of non-metals. It is present in the air we breathe. It is used for making fertilizers, weedicides, and pesticides. It is used for purification of water. It is used in the medical field for the making of medicines and vaccines. Let us now revise the chapter with some question and answer. For each question, think for 5 seconds and try to answer. Question 1. Which of the following can be beaten into thin sheets? Question 2. Which of the following statements is correct? Question 5. Some properties are listed in the following table. Distinguish between metals and non-metals based on these properties. Question 6. Give reasons for the following.
Question 8. In the following table, some substances are given in column 1. In column 2, some uses are given. Match the items in column 1 with those in column 2. Question 9. What happens when? Question 10. Saloni took a piece of burning charcoal and collected the gas evolved in a test tube. Question 11. One day Rita went to a jeweler's shop with her mother. Her mother gave old gold jewelry to the goldsmith to polish. Next day when they brought the jewelry back, they found that there was a slight loss in its weight. Can you suggest a reason for the loss in weight?